Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host Jack and this is yet another video tutorial of Windows Server 2008 R2. Again, this video tutorial will work with Windows Server uh, 2000, 2003, and obviously R2, um, or 2008. We just looked at the importance of DNS and why you need a solid DNS server and a solid DNS scheme for your network to make logons very quick and rapid. Now we're going to talk about the importance of DHCP and how DHCP well, actually, unless you are a, a big fan of going out and setting up static addresses for everybody's computer in your network, um, you know, which takes a lot of work because then you have to physically touch every single computer. Uh, in our network, people bring computers in maybe from home, like a laptop coming into your network. You'd have to go out and assign that person an IP address. What's going to happen when they go home, they connect into their internet, you're going to receive a phone call about 10 o'clock at night saying, hey, I can't get internet, I don't know why. Uh, it's because you hard-coded your corporate IP address scheme into their home network, which who knows what that might be. Uh, you may get lucky and have the same scheme, but I kind of doubt it. So I'm going to show you how to set up DHCP server, and at the same time, we're going to look at how you would reserve an IP address for a, any device. Every device on your network has what's called a MAC address, and I'll show you that uh, if you're not familiar with that. And we're going to talk about... Uh, how you would reserve the address on that particular laptop. So when that laptop presents itself to your network, it gives it a IP address based on what you want it to have. Um, and when it leaves your network, that IP uh, releases itself basically off that machine, and then the people can use it at home. So I do not right now currently have the HCP server on here. Um, I'm hoping this does not uh, <coughs> actually throw my home network off here. It's going to probably for a few minutes. And I'm going to have to uh, disable the DHCP server. But uh, for the benefit of the educational part of this and, and you learning uh, Windows Server, I think it's critical that you see this. We're going to go to Administrative Tools uh, if you don't have it configured yet. And we're going to go to Server Manager. Once you're in Server Manager, it allows you to assign roles. You see we have a domain controller running and the DNS server uh, currently running. So we're going to add a role. And this time we're going to just uh, jump through here and add DHCP server. Click next. Uh, introduction uh, to DHCP if you want to read about that or just uh, take my word for it uh, with the video that you're going to learn what you need to know. Click next. This is the IP address of our DHCP server. Okay, so the DHCP server basically all it is it's it's a service on your server that's handing out IP addresses. I think we kind of. Uh, uh, went through that enough in the, in the intro so you understand that. Let's click Next. Next it's going to tell you your parent domain controller which is our basic domain controller. Uh, we have one currently that we're working with. You can have multiples. You can have a, uh, we used to call them backup domain controllers. Now we call them branches and, and leaves and trees and all kind of crap in a forest. Uh, but uh, to me, uh, old schooled, and I'm sorry about that, but I always have a primary domain controller and I always run a backup domain controller on my network uh, to help with the logins, uh, to kind of balance my network. And it also allows, um, if the primary domain controller would drop out, it will find a backup domain controller and, and accept those logins. So you can still get your people on the network when you're fixing that primary uh, domain controller. Preferred DNS server, I told you before in the last uh, video, the 127.0.0.1, that is a loopback. It's a loopback DNS server. You can validate it, but it's just going to see itself, and it's going to be fine. The alternate DNS server, this is where I use uh, OpenDNS. Uh, if you haven't looked at it yet, it's 208.67.222.222 or uh, 220.220. Uh, then you click Next. Okay, WINS, we talked about WINS or window, uh, Windows Naming uh, Convention Service where we're not going to uh, worry about that. Click Next. Uh, it looks like I'm uh, starting to experience a storm here. If you hear some thunder, I'm going to be uh, bumping out of here pretty quick uh, to shut these computers down. But uh, DHCP server cannot do anything until you assign it a scope. A scope is just that. A scope is a group of addresses that you want to use or hand out. If you have a home router, like a home wireless router, if you look at that, uh, and if it's doing your DHCP, which mine is, uh, there's a scope of addresses that uh, assign to each device. When you run out of addresses, folks, no more devices will work on your network. 
So first thing I tell you everybody to do when they're, when they're creating a DHCP scope is look at your network. Count the total devices on there right now and give it, um, I would say, every year, depending on where you work, um, where we work is, is in a school. So every year you want to at least double that. Um, if not, uh, so if I have 20 this year, which would be, on, that would be uh, amazing for us. But if we had 20, um, I would say next year we'll have 40. And the year after that, we'd have 80. The year after that, we'd have 160. So you just want to double that number up. Make sure your scope is large enough. In our network, when I first uh, took over it at the school, I thought, well, why do we have a class A network? Um, if you want to know about subnetting more, I'm not going to get into that here in this video. Uh, I do Google searches to do my subnetting. Believe it or not, it works really well. Um, most people get away with a class C network. Class C network is basically 253 addresses. Uh, I always say there's one for broadcast, like 254 or 255 for broadcast. So you get 253 or uh, 254 addresses total, but plan 253. That's a safe margin. Leave those two other ones for broadcast. So you would add the scope here. Uh, you would give it a name. Uh, let's just say primary. That's our primary scope. Our starting address, um, let's say it's, uh, I don't know. Um, let's say it's 10.16.1.2. Um, and you would do that normally when you set up servers in your network, your server itself, um, go back here to even this, your server itself would be uh, your routers.1, 10.16.1.1 would be a router, uh, or 192.168.1.1 for your house, right? That's your router. Your server should start at dot two. Uh, I like to keep my servers low. And again, when I set this up, I try to think ahead. How many servers will I need to run over the next few years? Or, because you don't want to redo a DHCP server, folks. It's, a, it's really a pain in the backside to redo it. I've done it twice uh, because I didn't anticipate the growth of our servers that I should. So now what I do, I make this one dot 100. That way, that gives me 99 addresses below that. Well, actually, 98 because the dot one is really gone, right? So, 98 addresses below that I can use for different servers uh, or services. Maybe I want to run a web service or something of that nature. And I know where that scope is open. Uh, so, I don't want those addresses ever to be handed out. So, I start my scope at 100. We're going to end it at 10.16.1.253. Is where we're going to end it. That way, I know that's a Class C network. My subnet mask then would be 255.255.255.0, and my default gateway is very optional at this point, so we're just not going to put that in right now. All right, subnet type. Look here, it says wired. Least duration will be eight days. You can change this. Least duration will be eight hours. Basically, how long do you want the address to be hanging on a particular machine. Uh, if you have enough addresses, eight days is fine. After eight days, when the server no longer, when that machine no longer is turned on or activated, somebody's on vacation, that address goes back into the pool and then it could be handed back out, which isn't going to hurt anything. When the people come in and turn that computer on, it will just get a different address. Not a big deal. Click OK. That's primary. Again, if uh, looking at this, we have these addresses and say at one point or another, we run out. We say, wow, we really didn't anticipate that growth of our company. Thank goodness. So you're making a lot of money, right? You got a big raise as a technologist. Uh, you're rolling in the dough now, but now you have more devices you got to take care of. Uh, that's a good thing. All we do is we'd click add and we would add another scope or another range of IPs to have more to hand out for the DHCP server. Let's click next. Okay, it says enable DHCP v6 uh, stateless mode for this server. So clients can be configured uh, without using a DHCP server. Or disable uh, stateless. Uh, it doesn't really matter unless you're using v6, which I don't know of a whole lot of people that are. Preferred DNS server IP6 address. Well, let's go back. We're going to just disable this because we're really not using it. So we're not going to worry about that. Use current credentials, the administrator credential. That's fine. That's what we want to do. Click Next. At that point, now we, all we have to do is click Install. And we're going to go ahead and install this. Oops. 
it may actually ask you for your uh, disk. I'm actually loading this from a ISO image. Uh, this is a virtual machine I'm working with here. So, okay, installation succeeded. Close it and close this out now. Now, if we go to start, uh, we didn't reboot, right? Administrative tools. Now you see we have DHCP right here. This is our DHCP server. This is what it looks like. Again, it's a service running on a server. Very uh, important to tell you how that works there. IP, IP4. And now we can see right here um, that we do actually have uh, the scope. Our address pool. This is the address pool we uh, created. Blow this up a little bit more here so you can see this. 100 to 253. That's the first scope. Again, you could always uh, right click in here. Now you can do a new exclusion range. Uh, and since we're here, we're going to talk about that. Exclusion range is, let's say, for instance, if you uh, have more than uh, 98 devices. And you say, wow, you know, we, we need to exclude a couple more addresses. Um, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can start at an IP address and end at an IP address. So let's say, for instance, if I want to exclude 10.16.1.105. I can exclude one address, right? I can end it at 10.16.1.105. And I'm going to add that. Now, I just excluded that. That address will never be handed out on my network. It's excluded. I can use that address now wherever I want to use that. Uh, sometimes you would do that for printers. If you're having a hard time uh, deciphering what a MAC address is for that printer, you would just ex uh, exclude it and go with it there. Let's delete that exclusion. Address leases, uh, there's no leases out right now, but this is where all your computer names and the addresses it's handing out, it'll tell you the lease uh, expiration and the type of device uh, as they enter your network. Next thing we're going to talk about is reservations. Now, when we reserve an IP address, all you need to do is you need the MAC address and you need the actual IP address that you're going to give that device. Now, if you're reserving IP addresses, make sure it's one that's in your address pool. Here's how we do that. In case you're not familiar, you go into your computer, your workstation, wherever you're at. If you're in a printer, you can usually print the config sheet, and it's going to tell you a MAC address or a physical address. We're going to do IP config with a forward slash all. And if we look at this, you're going to look for wherever the current IP address is. And we know it's this one right here. Here's our physical address right here. So you would ask the user for that physical address. Pull this to the left here a little bit. And we would right click on here and do a new reservation. The name, I usually name it to whatever the device is. Um, this is server one. And it has 10.16.1. It knows your scope. All you got to do is fill in the rest of it, 76, and give it a uh, address, a physical address, 001C427F7F, uh, uh, and then 7F again. That's interesting. Um, and then A2. And if we hit OK, you see it says both. It says DHCP or boot, boot P uh, or booting from the network. We'll just say both just to make it simple on you. Okay, it says it's not relevant to a client. So it's not seeing it on the network because it's static to the server. But that's okay. So we cannot add the server in here, unfortunately. Um, I don't think I can add any in here, actually. Um, 105, I don't think that will add. Uh, yeah, it did. Okay. So it did add. So every time that this DHCP server sees this MAC address come on the network, the physical address come up on the network, it's going to hand it that IP address. That's very critical, especially if you're web filtering. Uh, even more critical, though, to make sure that the device is coming into your building, uh, whatever device that might be, folks. It could even be an iPad. We've reserved iPod Touches. Um, all of our printers we reserve so we know exactly the IP address for that device and it never changes. Uh, you don't want to set up an IP printer for somebody and they, it, they, it gets a power cycle and picks up a new IP 
all of a sudden they can't print. This is where this comes in very handy. Again, I'm just going to delete that. I showed you how that worked. I'm going to go here and I'm going to actually go and I'm going to look at uh, disabling the uh, scope. So as soon as I see it here. Uh, we can unauthorize it. I really thought there was a way I could actually go in here and just uh, shut this down. So if I unauthorize it, removing authorization from the service will directly cause the DHCP server to stop responding to client requests. Are you sure? Yes, I do want to do that. Um, and the reason I want to deauthorize it, folks, is because I have a DHCP server running on my system. I don't want this one to interfere with anybody in the house uh, right now trying to get on the network to get on the wireless or something. Uh, so we just disabled it. Uh, and you can always reauthorize it. So, uh, And there is something to tell you about that. If you're ever building a new DHCP server, uh, you get it all set up, you're ready to turn it on. I recommend you do this on a weekend when there's nobody on your network, uh, if your company is uh, so inclined to do it that way. Get your new one set up and ready to go. And then go in, you would uh, actually deauthorize your old one and then bring that new server, plug the network cable in, bring it up, and then it's ready to do the IP addressing for your network. Scope options, this gives you a little bit of the DNS history here, DNS servers. Uh, let's see if we can bring that up. No, because the scope is actually turned off now. But you can actually change your DNS servers if it would ever change for any reason. Uh, you can also change your domain name if that would ever change for any reason. So I hope that helped you with DHCP server. And I hope you now understand uh, the importance of having a good, solid DHCP server. Again, folks, don't put two or three of these things on your network with the same scope. You are going to have a nightmare. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of sleep wondering why you're having IP conflicts. And it's probably because you didn't deauthorize one when you brought up a new one. So until next time, remember, please subscribe to the videos. I appreciate it very much when you subscribe. Um, if I'm helping you out, email me. Let me know. A lot of you already have and said, Jack, I'm glad I'm learning Windows Server. My goodness, you know, you, you may need some help there. Uh, it's always good to help each other out. If you have any ideas uh, for any more Windows Server tutorials, I have a lot more in my head that I'm coming up with. Uh, please email me at jackstechcorner at gmail.com. So until next time, enjoy. Get your Windows Servers up and running. And I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.